Hello and welcome to the Flux Bug Scrub number 0003. Uh, sharing my screen here, and this is the spreadsheet that drives the process. Uh, if you are new to the Flux Bug Scrub, hopefully you found the Slack channel and checked in there first. Um, ask everyone to check in uh, like RSVP style so that we know who's coming, but if you're here, welcome. Um, thanks for coming. Um, so a little bit about how the process works. Uh, we have the spreadsheet, the notes in this column and this column, uh, as well as any, any of the blank columns will carry over from one meeting to the next. Um, but all of the calculated columns, the age will be re, uh, recalculated next time so we get a uh, proper sort. Um, the age itself is a composite uh, that tells us how old is the issue and how long has it been sitting in kind of a uh, blended way. Um, so usually I do a global filter. So we're all looking at the same thing. And uh, I'm just gonna take the filter off for a second uh, so we can see um, all of the issues and, and decide as a group where we're gonna start uh, and uh, whether we wanna work on new issues or old issues or um, is there a particular repository we want to focus on or uh, depending on who's in attendance, this will also vary from meeting to meeting. Um, sometimes we have no one in attendance who knows anything about go get providers. Uh, so we filter that one out right away. Um, and sometimes we have a maintainer in the room and we can do what we want. Uh, so, um, I think uh, we'll go with the same theme that we've been doing, um, just so you can see where this value comes from. Um, the formula is uh, like created date plus one and updated date plus one, and you use a logarithm to make them kind of uh, shallow. Uh, and then if you look, at about 2.5 is where we start to see things are more than a week or two old. And that's where we've been putting the filter. Uh, oh, I should explain this column also. Um, there's an emoji value in here you can pick from the list. Uh, so when we've decided which issues we're gonna try to tackle, we're gonna give them one of these. Um, and if we feel really ambitious, we're gonna give any adjacent issues one of these. Um, then if we think that we can close an issue or if uh, we wanna highlight it somehow, we can give it a medal. Uh, and if we've done everything we can for an issue, we'll give it a check mark. Um, finally, there's a, the block, uh, the bricks for any issues that look like they're blocked. We don't really have to do uh, exactly formal emoji ops here, but uh, it helps to put at least some note on this sheet because again, all of the notes from this week will be carried over to next week. So we'll know better which issues we should tackle based on which ones are new and which ones haven't been touched yet. Um, so I'm just gonna put the filter back and we'll pick a place and get started. Does anyone have any questions before we actually do get started? Okay. Uh, oh, uh, the next thing we usually uh, use a volunteer. I'm happy to do this, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's difficult for me to drive the meeting and the spreadsheet at the same time. So we, we usually ask a volunteer to drive the spreadsheet from the audience and um, I'll use my triage role to make sure the issue gets updated. Uh, do we have a volunteer for that? Bueller? Do you want me to do it? Let me open. Yep. I have to uh, give you permission to share here. Okay. Hello, I just sat back down. Uh, I had to get caffeine. Okay. The spreadsheet isn't 
linked from the dock. Oh, it's okay. not. Oh, Lordy. So we're looking at the spreadsheet. Yes. Uh, so I just explained exactly how this uh, works, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I was there for the stale age part of it. Yep. I'm going to, uh, well, maybe cool off my head before I switch to headphones. Okay, so Kingdon, uh, you want me to just update things as we talk about them? Uh, yeah, and actually the data is not okay. sorted for some reason here. I'm just going to do a quick sort. There we go. Um, actually, what I'm looking for from the volunteer is to just show your screen and follow the link to the issue so that we can all talk over the issue. I'll do the updating. Um, but Okay. Okay. Fine. If that, if that makes sense. Uh, so I need to share. You want to see the issues at the same time. Okay. Yep. yep. So I need to share that window. All right. Hang on a sec. Let's move this out. Okay. And then share screen. And which one? Oops, another one. Is that the Perfect. spreadsheet now? Looks good. Yep. Cool. All right. There's no point in me making that bigger as that because it won't. I will show you. Okay. Is that all readable? Uh, looks good to me. Cool. All right. Go for it. Okay, uh, we want to start at the top. Okay, so I should open this. Yes. Doing the right thing? Yep. Uh, okay, it looks labeled. Uh, the other, only thing I didn't mention is we can assign someone if someone wants to volunteer. Um, I do not have GitLab or any capability to do this. Uh, so we might have to just move on from this issue unless there's something we can add or contribute. Uh, I don't Seems see. pretty clear, right? Just need yep. someone to pick it up. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a check mark. Um, does anyone wanna volunteer? Uh, anyone have access to GitLab uh, or uh, drive to document the use case of uh, GitLab? No? Okay. Uh, I've got a GitLab account that I, I Oh, does GitLab uh, Cloud actually has the yeah. You mean hosted or, or a GitLab instance? I'm not sure if there's a difference between how they work with the CI. Wouldn't think sure. so. Um, and uh, we don't we don't have to volunteer. It's not uh, assign every issue is not the goal. It's really just to make sure that the labels are fresh. That's a good way to make a contribution is to give a thumbs up. At least we've touched the issue, uh, but we'll try not to you know bump issues if there's nothing we can add. We'll just um, have to move on. So is the website uh, repo uh, where you would put like epic good question? Um, I think so. This is, uh, yeah, most of the documentation comes from the website. Okay, because I would think that, that, that this would, actual implementation would be in the source controller. Oh, no, this is, this is a use case. So this is, this is writing it. There's like um, guides to how to do various things with um, GitHub Actions, I think. Yeah, in so this is like a, writing guides the same thing, it. but for GitLab. These live in the folder content slash en slash docs slash use cases, I think. So this yeah, is so this, this is really just um, tra translating whichever guide. Um, I don't. I'm not actually sure. Kingdom, what what do those use cases actually describe? Um, just so an integration, I think, because you didn't. That's applicable. Sorry, for didn't. That. If there's integrations that are, you need to know about, uh, or if there are gotchas, uh, it, it's Got it. just meant to right. be someone's actually gone through and used the thing 
and uh, tell you what they tripped over and how to get around it. Yeah. Okay. Do not need to be signed into that. Hooray. It's weak. Yeah, apparently. Okay. I don't even use that thing. I don't know why it keeps being signed in. Anyway, uh, okay. So let's go back to the script, uh, the spreadsheet. Yep. Yeah. So why would we prioritize this over other things? Is it the age? It's it's the age. We drew a line in the sand and said this is where we're going to start. Um, so okay. newer newer issues we're ignoring. Um, the only reason that I decided to do that was because the older an issue is, the more likely that it needs attention. I think. Uh, but that that's a subjective judgment. We can change that if we prefer to start with new things. Um, the other thing we didn't do is actually cut up turf, uh, which will be more helpful when we have more people at these meetings, uh, more than four, and it's less productive to try to work as a single group. Um, what is cut a turf? I'll show you. Uh, so if we're uh, we, we want to choose like how far do we think we can get? Let's say we think we can get through 10 issues in the next 40. That's pretty low ambition, but um, in the next 40 minutes, uh, go like, uh, this is what I mean. Okay. So take a look at uh, like 296. 296. Yeah, that's way, way down. Line 296 in the... Oh, do you want me to scroll? Okay, here we go. Yeah, is this uh, B basically the same thing? Non-GitHub example, yeah. Do you, the, the same thing as what, Sebastian? We want to link this oh, to the other issue we were just looking for, looking at. Yeah, would this oh, be this sort is of for like Terraform, though. That's that's the difference. Yeah, no, this is. Yeah, that's right. This is. Oh, a Terraform provider. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me make that wider. And we don't necessarily have to proceed in order. We can go in order of which ones are the most interesting to us. If that makes more we sense. Want to go from oldest to most recent. Okay. Or oh, doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. We uh, we just want to get more uh, more issues covered. So if you want okay. to start at the bottom, that that works. Yeah, I was just looking at the older ones to sort of, you know to get a sense of like how how that stale age metric works. Um, okay, there we go. Neat. Yeah. Okay. Kingdom. Sorry. I have been distracting you. So let's, let's do, uh, why is it only letting me paste one at a time? Oops. Let's try to get through this many. So we'll start with uh, this issues 40 here. Um, let me open that as well. So context. Yeah. Add teams to resource clients and more easily grab teams. So this is in the go get providers. So this is the um, project that is about dealing with GitHub, GitLab, um, I think just those two, but potentially Bitbucket. So, you know, like Git platforms, if you like. And it seems pretty specific. It looks like something Simon, um, that's foot, will have logged sort of in passing. Okay. So we could probably put a label on it. Yeah. What sort of label are you thinking? Uh... 
this looks like oh should i be putting the label on or i got it okay uh, it should be there now Look at what there is we can give it a it's one of the nice things is that uh, should just pop up on your screen here so it says enhancement mm -hmm. Um, okay, and then I want to look at this. Oh, this is actually a private repo. Okay, never mind. Nope. Okay. Um, don't think there's anything else we can do for this one. Okay. Back to here. No, is that something you'd have to like go into the source and figure out where that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a code change. Yeah, and and uh, so far the bug scrubs we've had less technical uh, visitors mostly, so we've skipped a lot of issues like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of part of why I joined today. I kind of want to figure out how to get into the Flux project and actually work on it. Yeah. So I think I would like to pick up a code change, but I'm probably going to have to pick up something a little easier, like a good first issue kind of deal. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what um, I'm looking for. We may be able to identify. We're typically not not very good at um, labeling things as good first issue when they when they come up. So that's the sort of thing that might happen in a um, bug scrub, I guess. Yeah, and I think a good goal for bug scrub uh, visitor for the first time is to get an issue assigned to yourself. Uh, so that that's a good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that yeah. that's what we're trying to do. And I'm trying to set up a, uh, I'm setting up a project directory here where I'm going to start checking out the projects. So yeah, I'm just uh, poking around in the repos a little bit. We're going to come back to that spreadsheet. I'm going to add a link to the spreadsheet to my readme. Bug scrub spreadsheet. We call this Flux Bug Scrub spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, so this issue uh, looks like I've commented on it in the past, but it's quite a while ago. Oh. Mm. Um. So let's have a read. Add this to my to reading list too. One entry for today. Neat. Okay, so shall I summarize it, Kingdon? That would be wonderful. Um, let's just make sure people have had a chance to read through it. Um, so That's this good. is about an integration with GitHub specifically. Um, GitHub has a uh, an idea of deployments different to Kubernetes deployments. Um, and GitHub deployments is, is um, I don't know much about it, but I'm guessing it's sort of an API for um, telling, at least telling GitHub about things having been, uh, code having been deployed into a particular environment. Um, so this bug is suggesting that there should be an integration of um, GitOps toolkit with GitHub deployments, essentially, and describes a little bit about how that might work in the API and um, the machinery of it. Um, looks like someone else thought that was a good idea as well. Um, so I would say this is definitely an enhancement. Okay, that's one thing. Is there not really? Yeah, this sort of seems like something you would want to you kind of start by first going out and reading, reading about how the GitHub deployment API works, or GitHub mm -hmm. deployments work in general. Yep. 
Uh, can I turn this into a discussion? I'd need to transfer it to Flux2 repo first. Do we want to do that? I think I have the power to do that. Do it, can we? Uh, is it? Can you turn something into a discussion? Um, I think you can turn things into a discussion, and you can open an issue from a discussion, but you can't convert a discussion into an issue. That's the way that the. Oh, I thought you could turn a discussion into. An you issue. can. Let me look at a discussion and see for sure. I don't want to. I'm going to do a little experiment here. Yeah, what's kind of the relationship between the repos? Is the Flux2 repo kind of like the main clearinghouse? Flux2 is the one yeah. that has a discussion board for, for uh, central yeah. discussion, I think. So, yeah, so create issue from discussion doesn't consume the old discussion, uh, but you can convert an issue directly into a discussion and then it's no longer an issue. Yep, that's, that's, okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll, I'll transfer uh, it to Flux2. Yep. Otherwise the Flux2 repo is the CLI, right? Correct. That's right, yeah, so it's sort of doing double duty. Uh, and then this is probably is this a proposal or uh, there's you have to choose a category first? Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. Proposal, yes. Cool. Okay. I'm not going to mark that as an answer. That's obviously wrong. Okay. Uh, cool. Shall we consider that one dealt with? Yes. Should be good. Ah, okay. Oh, look, it's one from the image controllers. It's one of yours. It is. When I even logged myself. Okay. So, um, just to, well, pretty short description there anyway, but to elaborate on it or paraphrase it slightly, um, the image automation goes through and updates files. And it takes, uh, it updates them by replacing image refs, um, like the one I'm just highlighting. Um, by, it replaces them with uh, sort of the new image ref that it's scanned. So if there were a Hello World 3.10, then it would go and replace. Um, and it's gonna get expanded out into the full. In a file. Yeah, extremely, so extremely verbose. Yeah, I mean it's not it, it's not incorrect. Um, it's just perhaps less surprising if it uh, like people tend to use the form that I've highlighted now, mm -hmm. which misses out quite a lot of leaves lots of things to default. Um, and when they get replaced, they will tend to get replaced by the longer form. Um, so this really just says, you know, try and match the original um, where you can. Um, well, that makes sense. Uh, that might be not a good first issue. What do you think? For someone who's trying to work on image automation controller, maybe this is a good first issue. It needs a bit of there's a bit of subtlety here because it also depends on how the reflector works. So the, the other controller that does image stuff goes and fetches, like scans the, the image registries, i.e. hello world, and gets all the tags. 
and then decides which one is the latest one and then puts that as a value, um, in fact, a value that looks like this in an object. And all the, um, all the updater does is just use that exact value. So in a sense, it's more about how you set up the policy than it is about the actual automation part of it. So is there anything that we can add? Good question. Um, let me make a comment. Is this a venue in which we can actually go and look at something or is it or is the idea not to really go beyond the issues? We, we can trying. if we have the people in the room. Um, it's it's okay. uh, really just to make any kind of progress that we want. Um, generally, yeah. I would say uh, we don't want to spend more than about five minutes per issue. But if we want to take one or two issues each meeting and say we're going to spend a little bit longer on it, that is perfectly acceptable. Uh, well, let's mark this one as one we could come back to. I'm just going to leave a comment. Okay. Okay. So would that be Fine, something in the image it. policy, uh, like where you would have to tell the image policy, replace it this way, or do you want it to work as a, do you think it would work like an automatic? Yeah, so um, I think it would be how the, so there's an interaction between the um, uh, image repository and image policy objects or kinds. So the image policy, you can just give it this form, the hello world 3.9, um, or hello world it would be. Um, and you might expect the, in fact, it may already do this, I can't remember. You would expect the policy to reflect how it's expressed in the original repos uh, image repository object. So if it is the short form, then it, the policy might just use the short form and then that would be end up being used in the center. It's kind of a user experience thing, isn't it? It's like lessening the surprise. So not like a separate, uh, like you have the policy. I don't think you would have a, a flag for it, no. Where you I say, I, I want to just put the tag here from the policy, it would be a different, it would be automatic inf automatically inferred. Yes, yeah, that would be the idea, I think. Okay. Um, but I think that needs a bit of investigation on my part to just go and see what, it, what the policy actually does because I've forgotten. So let's come back to that one perhaps. Who is Square Mo again? I forget. That's me. Oh, I thought you were. Hello. M Bridgen. I'm M Bridgen in some places, but on GitHub I'm Square Mo. Square Mobius, right? On Twitter, yeah, although I haven't really used Twitter for quite a while. The integration tests fail with conditional requests true. Okay. Oh, a long one. Okay. Uh, this looks like a test failure. I'm not sure which we'll be able to do. Go get provider. I'm not. <clears throat> just in a. So I've given it the bug label. Okay. I don't know enough about this library to know. Uh, I mean, there's no indication of whether this is a really big problem because presumably 
the library has moved on and is passing CI and all that sort of stuff. So shall I ping Simon? Uh, yeah, I guess it's been sitting for quite a while, so. I mean, I think uh, one thing you could do is just run the tests and see if this is actually still failing because it's been sitting a while. Maybe it's been fixed and just nobody circled back. That's a so, good idea. I'll try that because this is one thing I've been meaning to learn how to do is use Ginkgo anyway. Me too, but I'm going to assign you since you volunteered. I will take a look at it. Go get providers. Go, go, gadget, get providers. Um, the only thing is I need you to actually comment on the issue before I can assign it to you. All right, where am I going? In go get providers. We're in issues. I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet real fast. And we're looking at 43. Copy link. I'll just open link. There we go. You want to open up the next one? I can make sure Sebastian gets the assignment. Yep. Okay, and then you get a medal. All right, I've added a comment that says I'm going to try running the test first to see if it's actually still failing. And now, first, clone the depot. So, Sebastian, perhaps you could, if you have you put a comment. Ah, yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, CLI command to read status information from a commit. Uh, okay. So this is um, Philip Lane who is suggesting. Uh, so one thing the notification controller can do is write to the GitHub status. Um, API to say, uh, I think that a particular commit has been synced. And he's suggesting by the look of it. Uh, so you could uh, query the status from the command line and find out about any CI failures, whether they were flux related or not, I guess. Yes, I think that's the idea. It's sort of just making that accessible to from the CLI. That sounds like a nice enhancement. If you need to run make test for your fork branch, we need to supply the following environment variables. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, Sebastian might have, might be a bit of a faff trying to run the test because I think they probably um, do a lot of creating repos and GitHub and GitLab and whatnot. Oh, no. I, I better be careful that. about that because I've got. Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole CI organization that has a CI user I log in as when I want to do. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It's what you'd have to do. Maybe like create a new GitHub user, possibly, or at least a, an org. 
and I wouldn't want to do that. No, you can do that. It's just a bunch of faff. There's, there's no particular downside to it other than it's just a... If it will help, I can just invite you to some of my test orgs that I have, and then you can use those, or, or you might need to create a new user if you want to make sure you're not... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna avoid using, uh, you know, admin credentials for. <clears throat> Don't want to blow away any production database. Um, yeah, right. I think I could just uh, authenticate with a token, though. Yeah, the only the reason you might want to create a new user is that. GitHub tokens aren't scoped to organizations or repos, yeah. I don't think so. That's a good point. What I have done in the past is create a user and then create an org using that user. And then you sort of, that naturally limits the scope of what they can accidentally delete. So I'm gonna assign this one to me and I'm gonna follow up and ask if Phil already has uh, that bash script that he's describing this might be helpful to know what knobs he thought that he needed if, if it's been developed since September. Yep, that's a good idea. Okay, shall I, I can close that one, right? Yep. Cool. Okay, back to the spread the sheet. Okay, this looks like a quite specific bug. 